day I will prove you wrong. Okay. That looks bad, that looks bad. Didn't make my bed. I look like shit. <sighs> Valentine. <laughs> Valentine's Day. <laughs> okay, this entire video I will be saying va Valentine's because that's kind of funny and really fucking annoying. And if I am anything, it is annoying. So Valentine's Day is coming up. As we know, that's the holiday. Is it a hol- what is it? I've never really had to put much thought into it because I'm always fucking single for a val single for a Valentine's Day. I'm always fucking single. I've noticed that every time I'm in a relationship, a couple days before Valentine's Day, I get a call and say, Hey, I don't fuck with you like that anymore. And I think it's because they don't, they just don't want to buy me flowers. They don't want to put the money up and buy me flowers and a piece of chocolate, pick up a piece of chocolate. But love is in the air. I can smell it. <laughs> and one genre that I really have truly never read is romance. But I thought that for Valentine's Day, I would try reading some romance. Romance is a huge fucking genre right now. I feel like book talk is like 95% romance. And I'm also not somebody who like looks down at people who read these types of books. Like, yes, like, are they really easy to read? And are they really boring? And are they really like corny? And like, are they like for stupid, like people who are maybe a bit stupid? Like, yes. <laughs> and do I read like classics and sci-fi and like really complicated, beautiful, incredibly intelligent literature? Yes, I do. But does that make me better than the, the people who read these romance books? <laughs> I'm just, that's a joke. <laughs> that's a joke. That's a big joke. I'm just very curious. These books, people fucking love them. And I really don't think I'm going to love them. As I said, romance is not something that I read a lot of. Sometimes in a book, very rarely is there a relationship where I'm like, that's, in that's intriguing. That's intriguing and I want more. But it has to be a subplot. I've never really read anything. That's actually not true. I've read Colleen Hoover before. <laughs> Maybe I'll link the videos below, but I've read two Colleen Hoover books for videos. And, hmm. <sighs> I thought that they were pretty bad. I did not enjoy my time with them. And just like, as books? At the end of Ugly Gloves, she's talking about her fucking baby's uncut cock. Like, weird shit and just like not a vibe. But on this list, you will see no Colleen Hoover books. Thank God. But to choose these books, I literally just searched on Google popular romance books and this is what came up. So <laughs> I've got five books that I'm gonna read over the next couple of weeks, days. The first one is The Hating Game by Sally Thorne. I feel like I saw this everywhere for quite a while, but it's kind of fizzled out. But this was at the top of the list. This is about Lucy Hutton and Joshua Templeman. And they hate each other. And they have no problems displaying their feelings through a series of ritualistic passive aggressive maneuvers as they sit across from each other. Executive assistance to, I don't care. Do you know what? The trope is enemies to lovers. I've heard of that trope, but like in an office setting, I couldn't, I don't care. And then we have People We Meet on Vacation by Emily Henry, which I'm honestly kind of excited for. I've heard a lot about Emily Henry. I feel like there are people whose opinion I value who read Emily Henry and really enjoy her. But this one is about Poppy and Alex. They have nothing in common. She's a wild child. He wears khakis. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. She has insatiable wanderlust. He prefers to stay home with a book. Okay. <laughs> so they essentially have a falling out and then go on vacation together. The third one is The Kiss Quotient, and this is about Stella Lane, who comes up with algorithms- I don't give a fuck. <laughs> I already don't care. She comes up with algorithms to predict customer purchases. I- I can't even read the back. Like, how am I supposed to read this entire book? So from this stupid job she has, <laughs> she has more money than she knows what to do with, and way less experience in the dating department than the average 30-year-old. And it doesn't help that Stella has a Asperger's- oh my god. She hires escort Michael Fan with the looks of a K-drama star and the martial arts moves to match. What? The Vietnamese Swedish stunner can't afford to turn down Stella's offer. Okay, so she like hires a boyfriend and then I guess they fall in love. So now that we've got the straight ones out of the way, because as we know, straight is number one. Let's go on to the gay ones. <laughs> The first one is One Last Stop by Casey Mick. 
I got all these books used, so. So this one is about cynical 23-year-old August. She moves to New York City, which is supposed to prove her right, that things like magic and cinematic love stories don't exist, and the only smart way to get through life is alone. <laughs> Fuck. But then there's this gorgeous girl on the train, Jane. And then I assume you know what is bound to happen. And the last one is red, white, and royal blue. Oh, fuck. This... I don't want to... This is... What? When his mother became president of the United States? Alex Claremont Diaz was promptly cast as the American equivalent of a young royal. There's only one problem. Alex has a beef with an actual prince, Henry, across the pond. And when the tabloids get hold of a photo involving an Alex-Henry altercation, U.S. <laughs> Fuck out. U.S. British relations take a turn for the worse? This is crazy. I imagine this is just another enemies to lovers thing. So this is the stack. We've got five. This has got to be the most generic stack of contemporary romance books uh, ever. But you know, we're starting at the ground floor. I honestly don't see myself taking the next step to the, the second floor, but We'll see. I think because as I said, I think I might enjoy this one. I'm gonna start with people we meet on vacation. So yeah. I have completed People We Meet on Vacation by Emily Henry. Um, personally, I did not have any fun with this one. Well, maybe a tiny bit. I've realized this is gonna be a lot tougher than I thought just because I don't know this genre. I don't know rom-coms. I don't really know what makes a good rom-com. I think objectively, this as a rom-com is good. I think. In my opinion, this was just so unbelievably unoriginal and bland, and t to rom-coms, there seems to be a formula. And this followed the shit out of that fucking formula. Like, it was... So boring. Fun though. It's fun. Like, I understand why people would enjoy this. Not me. Like, this is just not for me. But again, like, I don't- when it comes to rom-coms, is it more unoriginal better? Or... I, I just, I don't know. And if that is the case, then this gets an A+. Plus. But for my own experience with it, I thought that it was just bland. Just, I, I think what, I just really hate straight people. They're just so boring and bland and colorless. I found this to be very cringy. Just this, like, heteronormative, like, it's, it's like, Very millennial, which m makes sense. I, I think that Emily Henry is uh, definitely a millennial, which isn't a bad thing. It's just, it's just disappointing. <laughs> there were some really strange, like out of pocket moments that did crack me up a bit. There's a sentence on page 37, not too far into this book that like shook my world. It is so visceral and the imagery is so quite disgusting. Our main character, Poppy, who works at a traveling magazine called r and &R. She used to have a traveling blog, which like got her this job, I imagine. But that was when she was like early 20s, still in school. And she's now 30 and her best friend, Rachel, is a social media influencer. They're hanging out one night. Um. <laughs> And they're just chatting about bullshit. Rachel, this like beautiful girl, her whole social media presence is about just being like beautiful and living this very idyllic, beautiful, opulent, wealthy life. To end this conversation she's having with her friend, she says, that cheese board has basically formed a cork in my butthole and everything's just piling up behind it. Which is like, 
what the fuck? Oh my god, this is so fucking crazy. Like, these are people that do not make sense. So at this point, they're like friends. They're th This is like a friends to enemies to friends to lovers. And they're going through each other's Tinder profiles. Alex is supposed to be like a boring English teacher. She's like a crazy wild child. And the whole thing is that she drags him along on these trips that she has. Each summer, they have at least one trip that she kind of forces him such like he kind of reluctantly goes because he's in love with her. Um, but they don't know it. <laughs> and he shows her his Tinder profile and she reads it and it's like just like super long and boring and the photo that he used is a group picture which is like obviously not good. Now let's listen to her Tinder profile. This is like the ideal Tinder profile to Emily Henry. I, I, I think. I don't know what she was trying to convey here. Okay. I open my Tinder app and hand my phone over so he can see the picture. I'm smiling sleepily, dressed like an alien in a silver dress and face paint with aluminum antenna hot glued to my headband. And then after perusing this profile, I guess. She pretty much asks, like, Would you swipe right? And he goes, I would. I would. And that's like a big moment for their relationship. But just o overall, what the fuck? Like, what are you talking about? That's what I'm saying when I'm saying these people are not real. Like, they don't act right. I also love the way that gay people are written in rom-coms. I think it's so... You think the GOP is homo... You think the Taliban is homophobic? Give a white woman a pen and paper and say, write a rom-com. They are going to create the most offensive and stereotypical gay side character. Never a lesbian. Never a le Always a white gay. Always a white gay man. And Alex, his little brother, is gay. This whole, like, rekindling trip. Because they don't go on a trip for, like, two years. This trip together is for his brother's wedding in Palm Springs. Of all, yeah. Of all places. Palms, yeah. And let me describe this wedding to you. So they step onto the driveway of the mid-century mansion with its googie-style swooped roof. The back wall of the house is entirely glass and overlooks a massive pool, lit up purple and green. People lounge on inflatable flamingos and swans in various states of undress. Women and drag queens in full-length sparkly gowns. Men in swim trunks and thongs. People in angel wings and mermaid costumes. <laughs> I swear, she watched one episode of RuPaul's Drag Race and said, I got, I got this character, I got this character down, like, I know what I'm doing. <laughs> yeah, overall, not my favorite at all. Oh my, too fu so fucking long too. Holy shit, I thought it would never end. But there were a couple of moments that I thought were like enjoyable, I will say. I really liked like the split timelines because a few chapters would be of them in the present on this trip, kind of like rekindling their friendship and that friendship obviously turning into something more. But as I said, each summer they would go on a trip starting like freshman year of college is where they met, which I don't fucking get this either. They are from the same small town in Ohio, but they met at university. I don't- can someone pl did I miss something because I just like read this way too fast? I'm pretty sure they're the same age too. Is it because he was- did he not go to- he must have went to school if he went to university. I don't get it. They didn't know each other in this small, small, small town that they're from. But starting freshman year of college, they start going on these trips every summer. And the first trip they go on is to Vancouver Island, which is where I'm from. Not the island, but like in the Vancouver area. That was fun because they went to Vancouver and they went to Victoria, which like on... Vict Victoria, very pretty, but like the most boring city ever. I'm so sorry. <laughs> and they went to Tofino, which is like one of my favorite places ever. I actually was supposed to go next month, I think, but something came up. It definitely made me like very jealous. I will say I was like, oh my God, like, I know exactly what they're talking like, They're talking about this. They talk, ah, oh. yeah. And the comedy wasn't all bad. Like there was, oh my God, this was crazy. I need to find this actually. So Poppy is talking about how she was bullied in high school and how she like gave this guy a blowjob and the school started calling her porny poppy. When I read that at first, I was like, what is what is porny? But I think they're referring to like porn, but I think they could have came up with something way better. But she tells him this and he's an English teacher. And this man straight up just says, if any of my juniors called you porny poppy, I'd fucking waste them. 
And then very shortly after saying that, Poppy says, I bet so many students have crushes on you. And he replies, one girl told me I look like Ryan Gosling if he got stung by a bee. <laughs> and she goes, ouch. Maybe Ryan Gosling looks like you if he was left outside to dehydrate. Did you ever think of that? And he goes, yeah, take that Jessica McIntosh. She replies, you bitch. <laughs> and that, I have to say, did make me laugh. So yeah, overall, <sighs> Way too long. The longest thing I've ever read in my life. Definitely did not enjoy this one. However, yesterday I started Red, White, and Royal Blue, and... You see that? That's- this is- this is how much I've got left. I'm really enjoying this one. This one- this is fun! It's fun! It's fun! I think what it is, the setting of this is so fucking ridiculous and just like weird. Like we've got a female president, Donald Trump doesn't exist, COVID doesn't exist. This is just a world that just- it doesn't make sense. It's so weird. Like why would- a woman would not, like- women are obviously way too emotional to be president. Their first period in office, war. Immediate war. This reminds me a lot of The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo, which I read a couple years ago, in that we're getting a peek into this very secret, exclusive, elitist society. This is about the son of the President of the United States falling in love with the Prince of Wales. And at first, I think I said in the beginning that I was gonna hate this. I the reason why I, I picked this one up as a second one is because I wanted to get it out of the way, because I really was like super confident that I was going to despise it and just think it was so stupid, which it is, which is why it's fun though. It's stupid and the world doesn't really make sense and the characters are just reacting to it. Whereas in this, you know, it's set in like a normal world. The characters within this act like they have mad cow disease or like rabies, like their rationale, nothing they did made sense. I do think this is written way better. The story as a whole, way better. The pacing is way better. These characters, every this is just a better book. It's silly and it knows it's silly and it wants to be silly. And it's written well, the characters are fun, they're kind of funny. Sure, it's definitely cringy at points. I think as the, the book talk girlies like to say spice, I've noticed there is a lot of sex in this. <laughs> like, I mean, it wasn't even halfway through when he started, um, they started f***ing each other in the butt. I don't know. <laughs> Whereas in this, they didn't f*** until like the last paragraph. But what I will say is that spice isn't really something I, I look for in a book at all. Honestly, I really don't enjoy reading it. It makes me kind of uncomfortable. And this is getting to a point where I'm like, chill, like just chill, just chill, just chill. Like chill a little bit, please. But I just finished chapter nine and I think that they're like, uh, the plot? The plot plotted, and it's plotting. The drama is starting to heat up a little bit. Yeah, I'm having fun with it. Definitely has not converted me to a romance reader in the slightest. I'm just gonna spend the rest of the day finishing this, and then hopefully, maybe I'll start another one. Yeah. Okay, so last night I finished Red, White, and White. What was that? Red white. Red white and royal blue. I have to say, I enjoyed this. It's just like good. Like it's, I don't know. It's, it's just fun. It's fun. Somebody commented on my Goodreads update of this and it was like so on the nose. Goodreads is the most, like why has it not been updated in 700 years? If you shut your mind, it's a very good book. <laughs> Which is so real. Like it just was silly and I think that it was written well. The characters were not too annoying. Every once in a while there was some crazy shit being said that was like... What? Like the vice president's, I think, granddaughter, Nora, when she first found out about this relationship, for some reason she wouldn't stop saying... <sighs> for some reason she would... <laughs> <laughs> For some reason, she wouldn't stop saying to Alex, You want the prince to dick you down? You want him to dick you down? He dicked you down? He dicked you down? <laughs> oh, you got him to dick you down? I was like, what the fuck is wrong with this girl? Why? Oh! Thank you. Thank you for listening and thank you for caring. I think what also made this kind of enjoyable was it wasn't fully romance, it was okay. There also was an election going on and there was scandals going on and they were like, oh my God, like, what's, what's the public gonna think? Like, oh my God, there's, there's a leak here. What's, oh, oh, we gotta hide our relationship or else everything's gonna fall apart. Like, I don't know. I, I, 
that was kind of fun. I, I, I gotta say it was pretty fun. But yeah, overall, I just thought that it was entertaining. I give it like a solid three stars. I definitely am not converted to a romance reader. I never would have picked this for myself. Like, I still wouldn't recommend this to myself. But I think that if somebody was to ask me like, what do you recommend that will induce a coma and like forget that I exist for three days? I'd probably say this. But after completing this, I picked up the, the kiss quotient. And I am 76 pages in and I'm absolutely hating it. This is so fucking... <laughs> this is so fucking weird! Like, it's so strange. I don't like it at all. Our main character, Stella, she has autism. And going into this, I was like, that's exciting. Like, I'm excited to see how that is represented in here. But... This is feeling like really kind of gross in my opinion. It starts out with Stella's parents asking about grandkids and saying, When are you gonna get married? We want grandkids. And she's got a very big issue with touch and companionship and partnership. So what this poor girl does is she goes onto an app, hires an escort, Michael Fan, and she wants him to teach her how to have sex, essentially, so that she can get a partner in the future and make her parents happy. This is the craziest shit I've ever fucking heard in my life. Like, I don't know what it is. I guess she is consenting, but in a way it's like, is this? I I just think that something like sex and partnership is something that you should actually want in order to do it. I don't think it is necessary. So the thought that this girl is forcing herself to be put in these incredibly uncomfortable positions, literally, to make her parents her parents proud. It just is so weird because so far it has been like 75% really uncomfortable sex scenes. Her being like, I don't want to do this. I don't want to do this. I don't like this. Please don't do this. Stop. And then every once in a while she'll be like, oh my God, but that kind of felt good, I guess. Uh, I, gu I guess. <laughs> I guess this is that trope, fake dating, which is insane to me that that's been done enough to become a trope. I feel very lucky that this is the shortest one. Mind you, it is still over 300 pages. Most of these somehow are 400 pages. I think my only qualm with this too is like, it's way too long. These books are way too long. I think the only thing that's really keeping me from not DNFing this, because honestly, I, I would. If it wasn't for Michael, his story seems kind of interesting to me. I don't know exactly what's happening, but I believe that he kind of started escorting because one of his parents is sick and he has to pay for their medical bills. That's at least what they've kind of alluded to. And I kind of want to know what the deal with him and all that is. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to give it to like the halfway mark and then make a decision whether I want to continue reading this. There's just so much that I think is wrong with this. So yeah, I guess we shall see. Um. <laughs> okay, let me, let me update. Let me update. So, the kiss quotient. I have decided to give myself some mercy. I DNF'd at page 100. <laughs> I really don't fuck with this shit at all. It's gross, in my opinion. I think what it is, is the two main characters have absolutely zero chemistry, like from the jump. And I'm sure they're gonna like fall in love and it'll be different and they will have chemistry. Maybe, I don't know. Let me know if you've read this. But to me, it just it just fucked up. Like the, the consent stuff, I I think what it is, is the main character, the man, the man. Michael. I think if someone was to come to me and say to me, hey, I have autism, I'm on the spectrum, I don't know how to f I don't want to f but my parents expect me to. Would you have sex with me even though I don't want to at all? And it makes me really uncomfortable. As a, and not even as a man, as a human being, I would say no. Even if is my job the way that it, it is for Michael. But I gave up on this one and I decided I need something to turn this around. And if there's anybody that can fix a situation, it is lesbians. So I started one last stop, which by the way, I had no idea. I don't know how I didn't catch this in the intro, but this is by the same person who wrote Red, White, and Royal Blue. This book started so well. I was quite into it. It starts with our main character, August, moving to New York City. She's transferring universities for the third time, and she moves in with three roommates who had already been living together. And I was loving their dynamic. Like, it was, I was LOLing. Like, I was laughing out loud. One of the roommates is a psychic, and they were, like, doing, like, funny. Like, it was funny. It was clever. It was smart. I will say I really do love the way that she writes. I think she's an incredible writer. I was also really excited because I felt like this lacked everything that I did not like about red, white, and royal blue. Just the added extra bullshit. This is set in like the real world. Well, 
You'll see. August is a fairly normal girl. Upon first impression, I was like, oh, this is just like a cute lesbian. Like this is, <laughs> she's just doing her thing, going to school, getting an education, getting her degree, living in New York City. This is fun, this is cool. But on her commute to school, she meets this girl and her name is Jane. And I was really intrigued. I was really into it. I think that the tension being created was like so fun. The subway that she takes every day is the Q train, which is like notorious for breaking down. So they keep on breaking down and the lights will go out and then Jane will be like, oh, like, let's have a dance party, like, that. Ah, let's get lit on the subway in New York City. She's just like a cool girl. I liked their dynamic. It was fun. It was all going so well. Je oh my God, I can't even say it because I was enjoying this so much. I genuinely was like, oh, like, this is, this is number one. This is the number one. J August starts noticing weird shit going on with Jane. Like, I think when she first met her, the lights went out because the train kept on breaking down and stuff. And when they came back on, Jane was just, she had vanished. And I just, I, I, I read that and I thought, that's kind of weird, but whatever, like, I don't know. Then she starts noticing other things about Jane. Jane is a ghost, essentially. And she's trapped on the New York City subway. Jane is from the 70s. I don't fucking understand any of this shit. This is the stupidest shit I've ever read in my life. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to this author. I'm so sorry. The fuckery in this? The fuckery. And that's not even the only added extra bullshit to this romance book. August, August, August was also a child detective. What? Her mother's like brother died or went missing. He went missing way before August was even born and her whole childhood Her and her mother have spent all their time searching for her uncle and her mother's brother. I had to stop I had to stop. I'm gonna finish it because this This is the only mercy I will give myself. I'm gonna finish these last two books, but wow What a fucking stinker this is so far like no it, why did she have to ruin it so bad? She's a ghost trapped on the New York City subway and they're supposed to fall in love and it's like, it's even more fuckery. It's even more bullshit. It's even more like, what? Then red, white, and royal blue. So I simply just had to take a break. I had to. So I started reading the last book. Thank God. Thank God. The Hating Game by Sally Thorne. I'm exactly 100 pages in. And so far, it is the most unoriginal, bland, cliche-packed thing I've ever Red. It is so unbelievably stereotypical. The man is tall, he has muscles, he's mean, qu very cruel, and she is tiny, petite, five foot to be, ex in the book it says she's five foot, exactly. She's extremely uptight, she's pathetic, her words not mine, she wears red lipstick, messy buns, she wears the weirdest fucking outfits ever, I don't know what the fuck's happening, but what I just read. So they both work in publishing. They were the CEOs of two different publishing houses, but they decided to combine because they were both gonna go into business. And they share an office, and they're like co-CEOs of this publishing firm. And what I just read, maybe somebody in the comments can tell me why. I think it's because she had a date that night, but this is not appropriate to wear to, the, to this office, I don't think. She had on a tiny, tiny, teeny, tiny black dress. She even said, I'm pretty much wearing a swimsuit. But not only that, she also wore fishnets that I think had diamonds on them. It's the weird, like this genre is truly the weirdest fucking shit ever. These characters have rabies. They have rabies. We need to address this. These characters need our help. They're truly medical mysteries. Why are they acting like this? Why are they saying these things? It's really weird and like very, very upsetting. To me at least. I think I'm gonna pick this one back up and see where it, where it goes because I'm gonna force myself to finish it. And yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I'll talk to you when I've made more progress. Done. <laughs> I would like to start by thanking um, my my team, my entire team, and also my parents and God. Oh, thank you, God. <laughs>
So, I completed the last book last night. I, uh, one last, <laughs> one last thought. I gotta give some final thoughts, I think. Also, I wanna apologize for this lighting. I live in Canada, so this is the, <laughs> this is the most amount of sun we've had in months, and I don't know how to act. Like, what is that? I, <laughs> I wanna start by giving my brief thoughts on One Last Stop, as well as the hating game, and then... Conclude. So, The Hating Game by Sally Thorne. I... You know, man, you know, I thought this was good. I thought this was really good, actually. I was not into it. I don't know, it's weird, because I can acknowledge that this, I think, is the best rom-com. I wouldn't really even say this was a rom-com, because I don't think she was trying to be funny. Like, I think this was rom, but it wasn't really calm, unless all of it just went over my head. Which, as I said before, the comedy within these books is not my sense of humor, but that's my fault. My sense of humor is just fucking awful. As you, you've watched the video, like... <laughs> I've been editing this video, you saw baby cupid fart in my face, like, I'm the issue here. I am the common denominator and I'm aware of that. But I think that this was written well, what occurred, what was happening, the choices the characters were making made sense, which was awesome. Also just the story itself is interesting, I mean, Lucy and Joshua, they are co-executive CEOs to two different publishing houses that end up combining to create one super publishing house because nobody reads books anymore, and they were both at risk of going out of business and they're both very ambitious they wanted to work their way up these companies and become like the boss and then the companies combined they are forced to work together in the same office across from each other so right off the bat they hate each other it makes sense but then their bosses elaine and i think bexter they're the ceos of the two companies that are now co-ceos i suppose a new position just below them opens up and it's naturally going to go to either joshua or lucy so there's already this established rivalry but now they're fighting for a position that's fun! And it makes sense. I just really couldn't get myself to care. I tried and I tried and I tried, but I, I, I really just couldn't give a fuck. But I was pleasantly surprised with this one. Then last night I finished One Last Stop. I would love to read a romance. Just like a normal romance without any extra bullshit from Casey McQuiston. Sorry, I cannot say that fucking Laughing. She just is doing too much. Like, <laughs> I kind of wonder if I would have actually read the full synopsis and knew that this was essentially a ghost. I don't even- I still don't know what happened. I don't know who she was or what she was or what was going on. I know it had something to do with the 1977 New York City blackout. I think that all of like the New York and queer history within this was like fascinating and so fun to read about. I think my favorite part about this book though was the roommates. I loved their dynamic. I think it was so fun. Now my thoughts on this experience as a whole, um, you know, I'm proud of myself. I gotta give myself a pat on the back because I was not into a single one of these books and I managed to finish four. I could not get myself to care. Even the ones that I enjoyed, like The Hating Game and Red, White, and Royal Blue, I just couldn't care. But I also think that I can acknowledge when something is good and when it isn't, even if I'm not really into it. And I would say at number one, the best romance I read was the Hating Game by Sally Thorne. It, I think it was just done well. Like, I feel like if this, I think this is a movie. I feel like watching this as a movie would be fun. But sitting down and spending like four hours reading it, it's like pulling teeth, uh, for me at least. But like a cute like hour and a half, shutting my brain off, just gooning and watching the screen. That could be fun. And what I also loved about this is there wasn't that awful third act breakup. I spoke about how rom-coms kind of have a formula and a big part of that formula is the third act breakup scene where like nothing really actually happens. <laughs> like in People We Meet on Vacation, they have this fight that honestly, I don't remember what it was about. I just remember thinking, why? What? Like, you're mad about that? But again, let's not forget, these characters are suffering from rabies, they do not have a lot of time left. Their rationale is all fucked up. So I guess that's why this tiny, quite innocuous disagreement caused them so much grief. But I was waiting, I was waiting for it in this one, and it never came, and I was so glad. Then in second place, I would definitely put red, white, and royal blue. It's just fun. I hate this f light. <laughs> it's just fun, and um, written well. I don't know. And in third place is One Last Stop. I think the most upsetting part about this book for me is the fact that she 
had to be stuck on the train. Like August would visit her on the subway and have these really deep conversations making out the entire time. And all I can picture, like I've been on the New York City subway, not a good place to like chill. Like it smells like pee, it's dirty, it's like often packed. And they're straight up just like, like they had sex on the train. Like that's one illegal. I'm pretty sure that's illegal. There's cameras, right? There's gotta be cameras. But all I could picture while they're having these deep conversations about ghosts and shit is the poor 45 year old single mother who just got done working a 16 hour shift at the hospital beside them like, In fourth place is people we meet on vacation. Everything I said before stands. It's just boring. And then in last place is the one that I, I couldn't finish, the kiss quotient. I would really love to hear some of your thoughts on this one because as you know, I got a weird, quite sinister vibe from it. And it feels great putting that one in last place. So yeah, wow. 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 I did it. I, I feel like I just fought fucking Goliath and like destroyed him. I also feel like I've been posted up in Rikers Island for the past 20 years. And on my release day, the sun has come out to, um, bless me. <laughs> I imagine this is what people who live in the North Pole feel when Polar Nights comes to an end and the sun makes its first appearance in six months. Thank you for watching. Thank you for being here. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Oh, also, Maybe in the comments, recommend some good romance. Obviously these were just the most popular ones, but I feel like there are maybe some out there that I could enjoy, and maybe in the future from your comments I might do a video like this again. <laughs> but please don't hold me to anything. My word means nothing. I am a liar, so. Yeah, see ya. Let me get this shot right now, me eating banana and fucking your mom. What would you do if in this montage there was a shot of me banging your mother and you were like, that's my mom. Hmm. Nah, look at me, Leo, look at me. This is me, nah. But they both just want such different things that they just can't be together. The frostbitten todger. <laughs>